Hello and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church, especially those of you who are watching us online. Today in our worship, we are going to talk about something the Bible talks about every so often and it's a very fitting thing for us right now in our country because we're going to talk about how a Christian deals with the government. That is what all of our readings are about today and also our sermon. And so thinking about that, we're going to sing our first hymn, which is found there in your red hymnals, hymn 239, Glory be to the God the Father, verses 1, 2, and 3. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask our God to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord, Keep your household, the church, in continual godliness and set us free from all adversities that under your protection we may serve you with true devotion and holy deeds. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading for today is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13. We're going to read verses 1 to 7. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. 
for he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, we'll read verses 15 to 21, and this will serve as the text for our sermon today. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in singing our next hymn. It's in your red hymnals, number 417. I'm but a stranger here, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know if you've heard, but there's a presidential election coming. In just 16 days, in fact. Do you know who you're voting for yet? I am sure you do. But it's sad because our our country right now is divided, isn't it, between blue states and red states. And though our community tends to be more on the red side, we have people on the blue side in our area and even in our church. And though it's true that there are many issues of our Christian faith that are tied to politics, 
In the end, a faithful Christian can be on both sides of the aisle. You can be from either party or neither. God is not a Republican. And he's not a Democrat either. But the truth is that our country right now, more than just about any other time in, in our nation's history, except for maybe the Civil War, is bitterly and angrily divided. That's why it's interesting that today, right before a bitterly contested presidential election, our readings all deal with the government. Now just like we have in the last few weeks, we find Jesus today in our gospel in the temple on the Tuesday before Holy Week, just three days before he died on the cross. And he's surrounded by large crowds of people listening to him preach and teach. But his enemies, the Pharisees, want to try to trap him with some questions, try to trick him into saying something that he shouldn't. Kind of like what candidates do at a, at a, in a, in a debate, right? And so they send their young disciples to ask Jesus an innocent question. And they send with them a group of people called the Herodians. They say that, it, that politics makes strange bedfellows. You've heard that before, right? Well, that's never more true than in our text for today. Because the Pharisees, the Pharisees were nationalists. They hated the Romans who ruled over them. They, they abhorred having to pay taxes to the pagan Roman emperor. But the Herodians, the Herodians supported the Roman government. They supported the Herods who were their puppet kings. You know, this would be kind of like Glenn Beck and Nancy Pelosi joining forces to work together. But their hatred for Jesus led them to do that, to work together. And before they would ask Jesus a question, they decided to butter him up a little bit. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. In other words, Jesus, you're a straight shooter. You tell it like it is. So tell us, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? This is a great trap. Because if Jesus would have said, no, you shouldn't pay taxes to Caesar, the Herodians would have gone and reported him to the government and he would have been arrested for treason. But if he would have said, yes, you should pay your taxes to Caesar, the people who hated the Romans would have hated him and have rejected him before it was time. But Jesus knew what they were doing. He could see their, their hypocrisy. So he asked them to, to show him the coin, the, what's called the denarius. And on that, on that coin, it had the picture of the Roman emperor Tiberius on one side. And on the other side, it had the, the inscription, Tiberius Caesar Augustus, son of the divine Augustus. So Jesus asked whose picture and inscription it was on the coin. Caesar's, they said. And that's when Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. So I guess the big question is, what is God's. What do we owe God? And you could say everything, right? And you could say nothing. I mean, we owe God everything. Everything we are and everything we have is because of His amazing grace. But you could also say nothing because in His great love, He gives us His forgiveness and heaven and all the good things we have as a gift. You don't owe God a dime. And yet, out of love and thanks for all he has given us, we want to give him what he deserves. So what does God deserve? Martin Luther tells us in his explanation to the first commandment, we should fear 
love, and trust in God above all things. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And we're going to talk about that third one today, trusting in God above all things. Our help doesn't come from the government. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, one of the reasons people get so stressed and angry about politics and our leaders is because they look at the government as the solution. They look at the government as, as our savior. You know, if we just get our guy elected, then everything's going to be okay. But if the other guy gets elected, the world is going to end. Our country will crash. All morality and everything good will forever be lost. And yes, the government is important. You definitely should vote and make your voice heard. You should do everything you can to help our, our government act wisely and compassionately. But even if it does, doesn't do that. The world is not going to end. Everything won't fall, be lost. I mean, no matter who gets elected in two weeks, because the government is not the solution. The President of the United States never will be your savior. God is. So give to God what is God's. In other words, trust in him. Trust that no matter who the president of the United States is, our God reigns. I mean, vote and speak out, but don't worry and stress about who our next president will be. Remember who is really in charge. Trust that he will always watch over you, even if the whole world falls apart around you, even if our nation or government crumbles. Remember, this is the king who loved you so much that he gave up everything for you. All of your needless worry about the, the state of our world and government, all of your anger against the people who disagree with you or who are on the other side of the aisle, all of your pride and your selfishness, it's all forgiven because of Jesus. One day, you are going to live forever in the kingdom of heaven with a perfect leader. So give to him what he deserves. Trust in him. Turn to him in times of trouble. Obey him, even if the rest of the world turns its back on him. I mean, he deserves it. He is God. He is our Savior. Give to God what is God's. And then give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Once upon a time, the government had a large scrapyard in the middle of the desert, which they were worried about. So they decided to hire a night watchman to keep an eye on it. But then Congress said, how can the watchman do his job without instructions? So they created a planning department and hired two people, one to write the instructions and the other to do time studies. But then Congress said, well, how will we know the night watchman is doing the task correctly? So they created a quality control department and hired two people, one to do the studies and the other to write the reports. Then Congress said, well, how are all these people going to get paid? So they hired two more people, one to, as a timekeeper and the other as a payroll officer. Then Congress said, well, who will be accountable for all these people? So they created an administrative section and hired three people, an administrative officer, an in, uh, assistant administrative officer, and a legal so secretary. And then Congress said, we have had this scrap, op scrap yard in operation for a year, and it's $50,000 over budget. We need to make some cuts. So they fired the night watchman. It's actually pretty easy to make fun of the government. 
Our government is made up of sinful men and women. They make mistakes. Sometimes they do really bad things. It's easy to mock the government. It's easy to, to hate the government. It's easy to blame the government for all of our problems. But our Savior today reminds us to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, to give to the government what belongs to the government. And what do you owe the government? Well, Paul told us in our, in our reading today, give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. We owe the government, first of all, our respect. Even if you don't agree with their politics. Even if you think the president's a jerk. Even if you think he's evil. You see, you don't have to agree with them. You don't have to approve of their bad behavior. But God does want you to respect the fact that he has placed that person over you at this time. Whoever gets elected in two weeks, respect him. Show respect in the way you speak about him. It's not Trump or Biden. It's President Trump or President Biden. You can disagree with someone respectfully. Show the president the respect he deserves. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And that means obeying as well. That means driving the speed limit even when Officer Bessler isn't around. It means not drinking when you're underage. It means not cutting corners or or cheating on your, your taxes. Obey the government in everything, even when they aren't being what they should be. The only time God says you should disobey the government is if the government tells you to do something sinful. The government forbids us from gathering together to worship God or commands you to have an abortion. Well, then disobey in that. But in everything else, Honor and obey. In just 16 days, we will know who our next president will be. In 16 days, some of you will be very happy and others will be extremely disappointed. But whether it's President Trump or President Biden, the president deserves your respect because God has placed him as an authority over us. If you don't agree with him, lovingly and respectfully let your voice be heard. But then obey. Pay your taxes. Pray for the president and our Congress and our local government. Because in doing so, you are loving and respecting and obeying our Savior God. You see, when you give to Caesar what is Caesar's, you are really giving to God what is God's. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I ask you please to stand. And on page 31 in the front part of your hymnals, we join together in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 31. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church that's found on page 32 in the front part of your hymnals. And in our prayers today, we're going to include a special prayer for Phyllis uh, Jones in our congregation. Phyllis is going to undergo her second back surgery this week. So we're going to ask that God watch over her and, and grant her a quick and full healing from that. So we pray together the responsive prayer on page 32. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you've established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you because you watched over Phyllis Jones and her, her first back surgery and you allowed her today to attend the, the wedding of her granddaughter, Megan. We ask, Lord, first of all, that you bless Megan and Nathan in their, in their new marriage, that you help keep them close to each other and to you all their days. And now we ask, Lord, that you watch over Phyllis in her surgery this next week. Grant it success, grant her healing. Give her peace and patience as she, she goes this long journey. Help her to trust that you are going to make this all work for her good. And now, Lord, we ask that you hear each of us as we bring to you our silent private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go now in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. At this time, we say farewell to those of you who are watching us online. We're so glad that you could join us today to worship our God and Savior. And we invite you to join us here online on Facebook and YouTube every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And also, you are very welcome to join us in person here in Edna, Texas, every Saturday at 6 p.m. and Sunday morning at 9.30 in English and noon in Spanish. And you are also now welcome to our campus in Victoria as well. We have worship every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Thank you and have a wonderful week.